The thumbnail is where we really start to take our idea and we make it real. It's where we have the intersection between the idea, the emotion, um, whatever's in our mind, and we sort of collide that with the page and see what happens. So let's take a look at a couple of quick tips that um, I can give you when you're starting out this process um, to make sure you're on the right track. So these thumbnails here are, again, from me working on concept art for video games. And the idea here is they're all just sort of ideating different uh, little scenarios within the same world. And again, there's no rule for what thumbnails should look like or shouldn't look like, how much detail they should have. Um, and, you know, there's nothing to say that, you know, a thumbnail needs to be for a finished sort of you know, illustration that has a scene, right? You know, so that's got foreground and middle ground, right? You can thumbnail out um, of an illustration plan that's like, I just want to thumbnail out poses for a character, right? And the thumbnail is just there to plan the pose. And all you're going to do is have a character on like an abstract background. And um, that's it, you know, but still, I think it's worthwhile applying our sort of craft there because even if, if you practice on something that's a little bit simpler for you, you could also thumbnail out, for instance, just a head, right? If you're sort of doing a sort of head sketch, right, or a head illustration, again, an illustration can still have illustrative quality if it's just a face, um, you know, on a, on a flat background, really. I mean, a lot of sort of Instagram influencer style art, you know, which is mostly just, you know, like cute girl faces, you know, that's often all it is, you know, but I think some of them are better than others. And a lot of it has to do with the illustrative qualities that are there, the abstract qualities of, uh, you know, the composition, you know, how the face is positioned, how the lighting is positioned, etc., etc. So even if you're just doing that, you can compose that as a plan. Now, again, that might be a quicker process. It might just be a sort of a, you know, a rough process, but, um, you, you know, you can still get a lot of benefit from that and make sure that, you know, you're, you're creating the best image you can. So it doesn't matter the complexity. I think it's still good to plan. You can plan the pose, um, you know, and, uh, or you can plan a big illustration. And, um, again, I think, uh, for me, I'm much more intuitive when it comes to this stuff. And I think it's better to view it intuitively. Um, but you can certainly at this point, apply your, uh, you know, rule of thirds or any of those basic compositional rules that you've sort of um, explored, because they can really help you here. If you're doing a few of these things for the first time, they can help to organize your thoughts, you know, so there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I don't think they're necessarily going to automatically make your image amazing, but they can certainly organize maybe, um, you know, a rough, more chaotic thought process, right? And give you something to, to hang everything on. And, uh, you know, I think that's that can be very, very valuable. So, again, um, I think the really key things are to make sure that you feel like you've achieved something throughout this process. It is very dangerous because you're just kind of coming up with sketches and ideas. And look, the reality is you've got this cool emotional image in your head. And it's hard to know whether any image is ever going to live up to that. I think what we have to do is shift our expectation there to be a little bit more like, I'm going to either create X number of thumbnails, right? And that can either be five or 10 or 20 or 30, whatever it is, however much time you've got. And then um, feel good that you have achieved that number. The same could be said for I'm going to spend X number, X amount of time on thumbnailing, right? So um, that should always be a proportional and, um, you know, relative to how long you're going to spend for the whole illustration, right? You know, I often say it should be, you know, five or 10% of your time should be spent thumbnailing and planning, whatever that is. And, um, you know, so that means, you know, if you're doing a, a, a one hour kind of, um, you know, cute girl head sketch and that's your illustration task, then, you know, maybe spend, um, you know, what would it be? Uh, three or five minutes on it. You know what I mean? Just uh, thumbnailing out a couple of ideas or at least thumbnailing out, thumbnailing out an idea that will serve as a plan. Um, if you're going to spend 10 hours on a, on a, on an image, then you should probably spend, you know, an hour, um, you know, uh, thumbnailing out some ideas and, and making sure you've got a, got a solid one. 
And really, you know, especially if you're doing this for the first few times, um, I think, you know, you, you could easily spend two or three hours um, thumbnailing, um, you know, if, if, if it's your tackling subject matter that you're really not used to, it can, it can be very beneficial. The thing is, you can always use those thumbnails uh, for other things. If you come up with 20 great thumbnails, that's 20 great illustrations you can do. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't always have to be a thing where you're sort of like, oh, I've had one image and I did 20 thumbnails and, you know, like, oh, you know, these are all good, but I don't know which to pick. It's like no, no one says if this is personal work, especially that, you know, you can't create all those illustrations. Um, what we're doing here is, again, it's more like sort of sifting for gold, right? You're, you're sort of looking for great images and the process that you develop is one where you, uh, again, produce different ideas and try and get good ones. Um Ultimately, I think a really good thing to do is, again, keep doing this process and, um, you know, every time you find a couple of really good sort of thumbnail images, just collect them, you know, have a have a page or a Photoshop document where you just kind of keep, you know, dragging in cool images that you've sort of created, um, you know, even if they're not part of the, the illustration that you're working on right now, you know, save them for later, they can be very sort of um, inspirational later on. But yeah, shift your focus to I'm going to do thumbnails for half an hour. Or I'm going to do five thumbnails or whatever it is. Okay, whatever the, the process is. And once you've done that, feel good that you've completed that process. And um, the next thing to do is pick the best one, right? That's really where it, what it comes down to, right? So pick the best one from what you could, what you could create in a given time. And I think the more you do this, the more you spread, the more you practice drawing small and trying to create a fuzzy, vague, uh, emotional idea, try and turn that into something real. It's just a muscle. You just have to work it. You get better and better at it. You start to look at composition. You start to look at other people's images differently. Look at how they plan them. You start to notice these things and those kind of... Um, those kind of, uh, you know, neurons will start to fire in your brain, right? You start to notice the compositional world that exists out there. So that's the basic sort of set of rules, um, you know, and tips that I can give. I think this is a vast subject. There are, you know, other areas in the in the course that sort of talk about thumbnails in more detail. And I just want this to be like, look, let's get the basics down. Let's do a few sort of quick things. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we'll talk about a couple of those, um, you know, like, you know, just a, a few like simple rules and things that we should just make sure we've got right in the next uh, section where we handle, you know, what to do once you finish your thumbnailing process. But, you know, as you're starting, good luck. Um, again, try and get those vague, emotional, cool, awesome ideas that are in your head down onto the page. And uh, it may be a struggle, but it's worth it.